Sergeant Tomlin speaking. Oh, Sarge. This is Dan McGrath. Yeah, theatrical agent. I'm at the Club Cezanne. They've got a girl out here that's doing a dance. I think you ought to pick her up. Ordinance 89A. 89A, huh? That's right. Swell. Tell a voice to step on it. Thanks, Sarge. <laughs> Boy, would I like to wrap that up and take it home. Why wrap it up? You're under arrest. Where's Mac? I don't know anything about Mac. Get your clothes on and come on. Why? That dance. It's perfectly respectable. It's in the Bible. Could be. But we go by the city ordinance. It's a later publication. If you'd been in the audience, you'd know that it's a very artistic number. Lady, I'm no artist. I'm a policeman. Just give me a minute to find Mac. He can explain everything. Get your clothes. You could explain everything to the judge. I'll help you get dressed. This is what I get for trying to be artistic in front of a lot of low-minded characters. I know, dearie. It's too bad. Wait till I get my hands on that, Mac. He's never around when I need him. Why don't you sit down until you can reach your agent? Sure, there's nothing like having a good man to love you. Ever since I lost John, I just been going around in circles. <laughs> All I had was a little teeny glass of wine, and look, oh, look where I am. Be <laughs> awful the class of people you meet in a place like this. Excuse me. Don't you worry, dearie. I got a nice friend that'll be here and help us. He's a great humanizer. He helps everybody that needs help, like you and me. <laughs> Come on, Tilly. Let's get it over with. Come on, Tilly. <laughs> Same rap, Sergeant? Yeah. I can't accept bail on you, Tilly. I'll lock you up and let you sleep it off. Oh, thank you, Sergeant. I was getting awful sleepy anyway. Sorry, Hoffman. She's here entirely too often. All right, Joy. Uh, good night, Sergeant. <laughs> good night, Jerry. Who's the blonde? That's Eve Lorraine, a dancer. Anything serious? No, we pulled her in on a dance complaint. I think it's a publicity stunt for soon. She need bail? I think so. Pardon me. Can I be of service? I'm Gus Hoffman of the Acme Bail Bond Company. No, thanks. Just a minute. Maybe you can. 
anything to get out of here. If you'll put up bail until I get in touch with my agent, I'll appreciate it. It's practically done. I'll be with you in just a minute. Then we can go across the street to my office and use the phone. I can't find Miss Lorraine. Do you know if she left? She left all right with two policemen. Oh, a pinch, eh? Well, I'll just stick around. Won't be long till I get a jingle. <laughs> All I know is he'd better be at the club. There's the phone. Is Miss McGrath there? Oh, Mac. So you just found out what happened? Well, I don't want to hear any more about it. You listen. No, and I don't mean maybe. Now, you pay attention to what I have to say. I've been arrested for no good reason, and it's up to you to get me cleared, you 10 percenter. I'm at the Acme Bail Bond Company in the Simons Building. All right, hurry. I guess being an agent has his drawbacks, too. He's the biggest drawback I ever had. I want to get somewhere. I'm ambitious. Oh? There's no future in dancing. I want to be a dramatic actress. My parents were theatrical people. I've inherited talent. They don't encourage you? They were killed in theater collapse somewhere out west. I was brought up in an orphanage. When I was old enough, I ran away. Theater collapse? Where was this? Somewhere in Colorado, I think. Or maybe it was California. I don't even know my real name. Oh, then you took the name of Lorraine after you ran away? Yeah. My first job was a stooge to a magician. But he wouldn't let me alone. I threatened to walk out on him, and I did one night, in the middle of a disappearing act. He put me in a basket, and I was to appear later in one of those trick boxes. Well, it's the best trick he ever did. <laughs> I guess they're still looking for me. <laughs> then what did you do? I joined the Adagio team. That's when I met Mac. He was agent for the act, and I've had nothing but trouble ever since. Well, what I can't understand is, why did he have you pinched? Who had me pinched? Well, your agent or whatever he is. What do you mean? Who gave you that idea? Well, the desk sergeant told me he had you pinched for a publicity stunt. You mean... Oh, no. No! And yet he... Well, maybe I spoke out of turn. No. Maybe I'm grateful. Do I look dumb? Well, not particularly. But I am. Very dumb. The light's just beginning to dawn. Oh. Oh. Oh! Well, take it easy. I'd have never opened my mouth if I thought I was going to do any harm. Harm? You've done me the greatest favor ever. I'll do the harm. Wait till I get my hands on that weasel. What I've been through. Every time I turn around, he has some crackpot idea. But this time, this is the end. Give me strength. Give me strength. For what? Come in, Mr. McGrath. Sorry, I kept you waiting. You see, I... Shut up. Huh? Answer me one little question. Just one question. Who notified the police? Well, uh... You see, there, uh, there's always someone uh -huh. who... who? Now look at me. I can explain very easily. You. 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 Well, yes. Uh -huh. I was... No, no. Not that. Here. Now careful, honey. I've got a witness. Come out, you coward. You, you skunk. You don't care what happens to me, do you? Oh, yes, I do, but will you please listen? You listen and get this through that thick 10% head of yours. I'm through, do you understand? Absolutely through with you and everything of all the contemptible tricks. That's gratitude for you. She thinks her dance is poetry. Art with a capital A. So I spend my time running around to find places where they appreciate such things. Yeah, 
Get her a boost in salary every time she opens in a new spot. And then I work out a clever way of getting publicity. Clever? Oh, now listen, sweet. I'll make it all up to you. Why, I'll line you up. Say, I know a spot that'll pay you real dough. Oh, no, you don't. You and I are through. Absolutely through. Okay. Good night. Oh, just a minute. The bail. Oh, the bail. Well, I didn't come prepared, but uh, Old Faithful will more than cover it. Hmm. And don't get any ideas. I'll be back for it. Hey, do you ever collect any of these rewards? Oh, I pick up a buck or two occasionally. I run across a lot of people in trouble with the law. Well, that's the last time you'll run across me. I hope so, but you never can tell. Okay, let's go, Eve. Miss Lorraine to you, and please be informed that from now on you and I are through. Thank you, Mr. Hoffman. <laughs> That's what I like about her. A lot of spirit. Theater collapse. Colorado. Out west. Hmm. I've read that ad somewhere. Huh. Parents killed. Quick reward. Hmm. I've got that here somewhere. dollars reward for information concerning girl born August 4th, 1923, whose parents, actors, were lost in the theater disaster in Colorado, April 27th, 1925. Yes, Mr. Hoffman. We ran this advertisement rather extensively about a year ago. Are you still looking for the girl? Yes. We advertised as a matter of legal routine in connection with the settling of an estate. Oh, no one showed up? Oh, yes. We had several applicants. They were soon discarded. There were no authentic proofs. Oh, that's good. Because I got a line on the real girl. I collect ads like this, keep them on file, always with an eye to people who run out on bail. That's how I happen to run across this girl I'm telling you about. It is necessary to proceed with extreme caution in this matter as it concerns the estate of the late J.P. Sodom. Sodom? Oh, I've heard that name. Oh, I remember. Hair tonic. Sodom scalp saver and dandruff destroyer. Hmm. I tried it once. Wasn't so hot. Say, old man Sodom must have left a wad of dough. The estate runs to several millions. Just where does this girl fit in? The one you advertise for? She's one of the principal heirs. J.P. Sardom had two children, a son and a daughter. The daughter ran away and married an actor named Westlin against her father's wishes. He disowned her, never saw her again. But he knew she had a baby girl. She wrote her aunt, Mrs. Sarah Birch, to that effect. Later, when he relented and tried to get in touch with his daughter, he discovered that she and her husband had been killed. But he included his granddaughter in his will. The distribution will be made shortly, whether we locate the girl or not. Your search is over. The Sodom mystery is solved. Of course you realize we'll have to have legal proof of identity. You just leave that to me. I'll see that everything's regular. I'll satisfy myself that this gal is the real McCoy. Good day, Mr. Hoffman. I'll be expecting you. I don't care what the job is, I'm not going to do that dance anymore. Now look, don't forget I've got a contract. Don't pull that contract routine, either. Well, you signed it, didn't you? Yeah, but I was too young to know what I was doing. You were never that young. I wonder what Mr. Hoffman wants to see me about. You won't have to wonder long. Here he comes now. Now, remember, whatever his proposition is, I'll do the talking. For 10%, of course. 
Sit down, Mr. Hoffman. Yes, do. You remember my agent. Yeah, but I thought you were firing him. I wanted you to talk business with me. That was just Miss Lorraine's artistic temperament. Besides, she can't fire me until my contract expires. So that lets you out. Well, if I'm out, then she's out a hunk of dough. How about it? Of course I'm interested. Okay. How would you like to be an heiress? <laughs> heiress to what? You remember what you told me about your folks in that theater collapse? Well, I sort of remembered reading something about that somewhere. Yes? Well, get this. I ran across an ad for a girl born about the time you were, whose mother and father were killed in the same way. I ran it down. What do you think is on the other end of the rainbow? Nothing but the J.P. Sodom hair oil millions. How exciting! But you couldn't be the Sodom heiress. How do you know? Well, you can't prove that she ain't. Maybe I can prove that she is. If I get my cut. I knew it. I knew I was a lady. Mac, it's really true. I couldn't have felt the way I do about, well, you know, about my art and everything. Unless it was in my blood. Don't act like a fool, Eve. This is only a job Gus is talking about. Job? Don't you be a fool. You said the description fits. Parents, actors, killed in a theater. That's right. Coffee? Take mine bonded bourbon. This calls for something special. Champagne cocktail. Now I know what it was inside of me made me feel the way I did. No matter how you feel, I still have to dig up a lot of proof. Look, Eve, isn't it bad enough you're trading veils around and imagining you're Salome without getting ideas that you're an heiress? When you know as well as I do that you're just a good-looking dame. You're wrong as usual, Mac, and this time I'm going to prove it to you. With Mr. Hoffman's help. You said it. Bring me a bottle of champagne. Chateau Martin, 29. I want to see myself in a mirror to make sure it's really me. I feel like I'm walking in my sleep. I hope you bump into something hard enough to wake you up. Oh, don't discourage her. Let her think she is the Sodom gal. She'll be able to act it better. But she can't get away with it. Well, why not? Old Sodom was just a quack who got rich in the patent medicine racket when it was good. Why should you expect his granddaughter to be any better than this little? Cut that. Don't ever forget, as far as you're concerned, she's always Miss Lorraine. Okay, okay, with me it's strictly business, so long as I get my dough. And probably ten years in the jug. How are you going to dig up a birth certificate? How did you know I was going to dig up a birth certificate? Was I born yesterday? You're acting like it. If you was wise, you'd string along. Make this girl believe she is the missing heiress. I don't get it. If a guy who spends his time making bail for lawbreakers is dumb enough to run into a ten-year rap for conspiracy or something, it's okay by me. But I don't want Eve mixed up in it. Cut it. Here she comes. Well, let's get down to business. To the Sardom millions. To the Sardom family. From now on, I'll always be a lady. Lady Eve, they'll call me. I've gone over the proofs you submitted, Mr. Hoffman. They appear to be satisfactory. Quite in order. How soon can the reward be collected? As soon as the court determines that the young lady is really Margaret Westland's daughter. The will is in probate court, you know. Oh, there's no doubt about the outcome. I've talked to Mr. Horace Sardom, son of the founder of the business and uncle of the uh, missing heiress. No more, she's not missing. Well, we've decided that Miss Lorraine should meet the Sodom family. They'd like to have you come to dinner at their home next Saturday evening, Miss Lorraine. I'll be so happy to meet them. You have no idea how wonderful it is to feel that you, I mean, I belong to a family at last, and really know who I am. Shall I call for you, Miss Lorraine? No, thank you. That won't be necessary if I might bring my manager with me. Manager? Oh, she means her agent. She's just used to doing what he says, you know, like following a lawyer's advice. Oh. Anyway, this isn't exactly a social call. Well, perhaps that's the way to look at it. Eight o'clock then, Miss Lorraine. The address? 1242 Commodore Drive. I've seen the house from the outside. Goodbye, Miss Lorraine. Until Saturday. Goodbye, Mr. Campbell. Goodbye. <laughs> Thank you.
Whatever happens, remember I didn't want you to go ahead with this. You'll probably land us both in jail. Don't you ever mention that word to me again. And don't talk too much. We'll give away what you really are. I'm really half Sardom. And the other half is plain sardine. Good evening. Uh, we're expected, I think. Miss Lorraine, Mr. McGrath. Would you please get in? May I take your hat, sir? Oh. What he does with that rented coat? I shall place the lady's coat in the guest room at the head of the stairs, sir. This way, please. Miss Lorraine and Mr. McGrath. Good evening, Miss Lorraine. Mr. Campbell, Mr. McGrath. How are you? How do you do? I'm using my own name, Wesley. Oh. Miss Westland, Mr. Sardin. We're very happy to know you, Miss Westland. Uh, Mrs. Sardin. How do you uh, do? My daughter, Millicent. Hello. May I present Mr. McGrath? How do you do? Mr. McGrath. How do you do? Uh, come, uh, let's sit up. Ever since Mr. Campbell told us about you, we've been very anxious to meet you, Miss Westland. Couldn't you just call me Eve, Uncle Horace? As to any relationship, we will be guided by the court decision. You see, why I came along, I'm her manager. No, thank you. She's have to let her enthusiasm run away with her. Think it over, I said you're getting along all right. You better be careful. We've got something to lose as well as to gain in this deal. Indeed. Naturally, Mr. McGrath wants me to continue my career. Definitely. He's afraid you might catch gentility. And it's very dull. For years, we've tried to imagine what Margaret's child was like. All my life, I've wondered about my parents. How they looked, everything. I personally can't imagine a dancer in the family. Why not? My mother married an actor and went on the stage with him. I can't understand a sod of making such a choice. Oh, uh, shall we drink a toast to the latest member of the family? Thank you, Uncle Horace. Might as well give in, Mother. You'll be Aunt Lavinia before dinner's over. You know what's funny about this whole thing? I'll tell you. You know, Eve blames me for her arrest. If she hadn't been taken to night court, she wouldn't have met this bail bondsman. And then she never even heard of this missing heiress. <laughs> Talk about coincidences. Night court? Well, what was she arrested for? Dancing. Not enough clothes. How disgraceful. Levine. You told us only that the girl was a dancer when you suggested we invite her here. Well, I'm sorry. Mr. Hoffman didn't say how he met the young lady, but that's beside the point. The only question is whether or not she's J.P. Sardom's granddaughter. Even if she were, I wouldn't accept such a, a person socially. Lavinia. Never mind, Uncle Horace. I don't care. She's only an in-law. I'm a Sardom. There may be some doubt about that. There's no doubt about your manners. I've never met anyone on the stage or in police court as rude as you are. And the next time you see me, it will be in court. swinging a few veils around her head would give a girl such strength. <laughs> well, now, don't everybody get upset. That's just her artistic temperament. Just let her cool off. She'll come back. Put up your hands. And don't move. Come here. Closer, so I can see you. Is that thing loaded? No, it's only a toy. There isn't anything real in this whole house. I'm sorry I frightened you. I was looking for my coat. Well, I'm glad you came in. Gets kind of lonesome not seeing anybody but the family. I'm one of the family, I guess. I'm Eve Westland. Margaret Westland's baby? Well, burn my sagebrush. I'm your Aunt Sarah. I hadn't heard about you. I'm the only one Margaret wrote to when you were born. I was living out in Wyoming then. Oh, your mother was a fine girl, honey. You're sweet. 
Well, Aunt Sarah. So, you're the girl the Sardons have been so upset about this week. <laughs> Nobody told me you were coming here. When there's company, I stay in my room. I was so happy to think I really had a family. Until tonight, Aunt Lavinia... Oh, never mind her. <laughs> She's fit to be tied because the lawyer found you. Uncle Horace was nice. Oh, yes. But Lavinia rides herd on him too much. He's the one invited me here to visit them. And I know he wants me to have a good time. But he hasn't had a chance to take me to even one nightclub. And he won't either, unless Lavinia diets herself into a hospital. <laughs> Do you mean to say you've never been to a New York night spot? I haven't been out of this corral. Well, it's time you got out. You and I are going to do a little howling. Do you mean it? Yippee! Darn, how about you? Well, I have What my... you need is a little drink to give you an appetite. A drink? Whoop! Now we're rolling. I danced here. You did? Good evening, Miss Lorraine. It's good to see you again. <coughs> we missed you. Thank you. May I take your order? We'll have a cocktail. And Sarah, what will it be? Well, what are you having? What would you suggest? Mm, a taxi. A taxi? Well, I should say not. We just got here. That's a drink, Aunt Sarah. It's something like a sidecar, only it gets you rolling a little faster. That's for me. Two. I wouldn't be too upset. Everything will work out all right. Have your smelling salts ready, Mother. Why, what has happened, Millicent? Our little guest has kidnapped Aunt Sarah. Well, or vice versa. Oh. Anyway, they're gone. Oh. Well, 10% of nothing is nothing. To Aunt Sarah, the relative who makes up for the rest of them. And the next verse to you, to my grandniece, who's the spitting image of old J.P. so far as brains and spirit go. Now tell me about him. Welcome to Club Suzanne. Tonight we start our little show with a maid and her organ. Ladies and gentlemen, Salika Pettiford. I was arrested, Aunt Lavinia blew up. Shucks. Your grandfather was arrested more than once and he was trying to put his patent medicine over. Why? Well, 
Seems the medicine was worse than the sickness. And then he got a bright idea and changed the labels to hair restorer. And his fortune was made. Just goes to show there's some good in anything. The law hadn't finally caught up with him. Was my grandfather ever really in jail? Sure. My husband sent him money once for a lawyer to get him out. I guess I've just been unconsciously following in his footsteps. Why should the Sardams look down on me? My husband was a cattleman and a banker, and he looked down on a patent medicine man. He offered J.P. a job in his bank. <laughs> he laughed at him and said, while you're making thousands in this bank, I'll be making millions. And he did. My grandfather. Yep. And he had a lot of character, too. I'll be a credit to him from now on. Too. Most of the side of money is invested in real estate. Miss Westland, giving up your career was an excellent idea. You met with the approval of the Sardams. I'm a Sardam, and I did it because I didn't want to do anything to bring disrespect on the family name. I understand. Mr. Sardam appreciates your attitude, and he asked me to place funds at your disposal. Money from the estate, or his own? Well, sort of a personal allowance to enable you to live, uh, like a Sardom. You may repay him if you like when the estate is settled. I do appreciate Uncle Horace's kindness and generosity. Mr. Sardom's going to meet us here. He asked me to explain what he had in mind. However, to make it plain, the apartment is Sardom property, so you might almost say you own a part of it, <laughs> if the court so decides. I know. How do you do? How do you do, Mr. Campbell? Hi, Campbell. And Sarah. Hello, Eve. Uncle Horace, how nice. How are you, Miss Wesley? How do you like the place? I love it. This is nice. Come on, show me around. That's a good idea. I haven't seen it myself. Excuse me. As I said before, this seems a very wise move. The financial support will prevent any further publicity. That doesn't enter into it. I've been greatly upset by the way we've treated the girl. If she is my niece, she should be taken care of. Of course. However, one angle of the matter does trouble me. What's that? Well, if the court disproves her claim, well, the girl is so positive that she's a sardom, a member of a family at last, it's going to hurt. That's right. There's so many gadgets in that kitchen, you won't have to get yourself an electrician to show you how to run them. The apartment's adorable. I never saw anything so lovely. I'm glad you like it, my dear. It's yours as long as you wish. Uncle Horace, I have a request. Huh? Oh, uh, of course. Could we arrange to have Aunt Sarah live here with me? I'd like to stay with Eve. We could take care of each other. Besides, I think it'll make it easier for you with Lavinia if I got out. If it pleases you both, I'm for it. We'll have fun. Besides, time I put my money in circulation anyway. Uncle Horace, how can I ever thank you? You don't have to, my dear. It makes me very happy. Can we move in today? Everything's taken care of. <laughs> well, shall we run along and let the ladies take possession? I'll go home and break the news to Lavinia. Oh, uh, perhaps I'd better. Ah, now don't be worried, Horace. I'm not going to put my foot in it. I'll just say I found an apartment and I'm taking Eve in. Thanks. How is Lavinia going to be mad and glad at the same time? <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Goodbye. Goodbye, Goodbye Uncle Horace. Goodbye, my dear. Goodbye, Mrs. Birch. Goodbye, Mr. Campbell. Miss Westland. Goodbye. Be seeing you. Oh, Aunt Sarah. <laughs> mm. I've got to work so hard. I've got so much to learn to be a sardom. Now, don't go straight-laced on me. Better be just what you are. After all, we want to have some fun, don't we? But don't society people have fun? Well, I guess so. But not the Sardoms. I've always thought family life must be wonderful. Can you imagine Lavinia in the middle of a warm and cozy family life? <laughs> As for me, I want to kick up my heels. Let's start by having one of those taxis.
I don't understand double talk, especially over the phone. What's on your mind, Gus? Sit down. I don't trust Ames in the first place. Now I find this chick has run out on me. Now take it easy. What do you mean she ran out on you? She can be reached any time, and anyway, you can always get in touch with me. How many times do I have to tell you that my deal is with Miss Lorraine? I know the Sodoms have given her an apartment in a bank account. I know all about that, so what? So I think I have just a little something coming. You haven't got a thing coming except the reward. And you'll get that when the court decides. Well, supposing the court doesn't decide. You can't blame me for trying to dip my spoon into the gravy that's being passed around. That's way out of line, Mr. Hoffman. Since when are you butting into my business, Mr. McGrath? I'll butt in whenever her interests are concerned. I didn't want her mixed up in this mess, and you know it. But now that she is, I don't want any trouble from you. She's living off the fat of the land. She might be in jail if it wasn't for me. And that's just where I can put her. But not without putting yourself there, too. Be careful, Hoffman. Two can play at that kind of bluff. Look, Eve is a good kid. And she wouldn't gone for any such cockeyed idea. She hadn't believed it was the real thing. And legitimate. And if there's any warning to be done, I'll do it. Just a minute. In every big deal of this kind, there's a bird and a worm. Just don't ruffle my feathers. Did you ever hear about the worm that turned? Are you home, honey? Hi, Aunt Sarah. Don't fall over the boxes. Well, hurry on out here. I want to see what's in them. Did you get your shopping done? You never had a chance. Mac and I took in the ball game. Phew! I'm full of pop and peanuts. Aunt Sarah, you say the funniest thing. Come on, hurry up. I want you to try everything on. Here's something from Young Sportswear. All right, I'll start with that. Just think. I've never played a game of tennis or ridden a horse. Well, if a horse ever saw you in that outfit, he'd certainly shy. They're for tennis. I want to get tan. Why do you want to ruin a nice white skin? Because it reminds me of my past, dancing under spotlights. Now I'm going to get my exercise under the sun. That's Mac. Hello, Mac. Hi, Aunt Sarah. Holy smokes, looks like a bargain sale, Eve. Hello, Mac. I told Eve what a swell time we had this afternoon. It was fun, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. It's a good thing Aunt Sarah didn't have a gun. She just shot the umpire. What are you doing in those things? I thought you were the girl who was never going to show her legs again. This is a tennis outfit. You can't play tennis. I can learn. I don't get it. Why is it more respectable to show your legs in sunshine than at night? It isn't. But there's a ruling on it in the city ordinance. Remember? All right, you win. How about a drink, Mac? Okay. Say, have you heard from Gus Hoffman lately? No. How do you like this? Class with a capital K. You know, Evie might try to make trouble if he were hefty all this. Why? Well, he figures he's got something coming. He's got his reward coming, hasn't he? Well, yes, but he might try a double cross and try to get some of this. But this is just an advance from Uncle Horace. Well, maybe I'm dumb, Eve. But I'm still smart enough to know that you're heading for trouble. Why, Mr. McGrath, you're so concerned all of a sudden. I give up. Don't say I didn't warn you. Well, now that we've settled that, if you'll excuse me, I'll go change. Say, I've got two tickets for the show tonight. Why don't you take Aunt Sarah? I've got to study. Study? Certainly. I have two French lessons a week for Madame Benoit. Oh, no. Oh, yes. I'm also studying Shakespeare with Professor Blitz. Have a drink, Mac. And how? This is too much for me. Grab your hat, Aunt Sarah. We're going to see a show. Yeah, but what about Eve? Never you heard her. She's going to study Shakespeare. Ah, oh, Juliet. Juliet, parting is such sweet sorrow that I shall say good night till it be morrow. Yes, mother. 
Come in here a moment, will you? I want to talk to you. What have I done now? It isn't anything you've done. It's something we must do. Oh, Mother. This means just as much to you as to me. I should expect your help. Shoot. Well, it's your father. Oh? Uh -huh. I don't know what to do. He's letting that Lorraine girl make a fool of him. Not father. Oh, don't be childish. You know how gullible he is. He just doesn't see through her. Yes, I noticed that Uncle Horace business the first night. What now? Has he been seeing her? He's given her an apartment and an allowance. We can afford it, can't we? Surely you're not so stupid as to believe the money worries me. Well, what do you intend to do, buy her off? Oh, I don't know if I can make your father do it. And I don't know that she'll agree. Oh, Mother, make up your mind. Why not let him have his fling? Keep him young. Millicent! Oh, you worry too much. And Sarah's always on hand to chaperone them, isn't she? Now, don't be vulgar. Oh, Mother, I have troubles of my own. You know I have to dig up talent for that benefit show. Now, that's what I want to talk to you about, dear. Couldn't you ask Eve to take part? Have you lost your mind? Oh, naturally, she couldn't do that shocking dance, but... Um, now, what I'm getting at is uh, if she should try to do something else and uh, appear ridiculous. Why, you Jezebel. That's just plain dirty. Not at all. I've got to open your father's eyes. Oh, I know she's not the sweet little thing he thinks she is, but I've got my show to think about. If you think anything of me or your own name, you'll do this. Say, maybe you've got something there. I think I will. Hello? Hello. Matt phoned. He wants to take us to dinner tonight to celebrate my birthday. That's nice. Speaking of birthdays, here's a little something for me. Oh, thank you. Happy this birthday. <gasps> this is going to be the nicest birthday I've had in years. Oh, Eve, it's lovely. Look inside. Huh? Well, fence me in. Just what I wanted. How'd you know? A gun-toting mama from the wide open spaces ought to do more than read about it. But you must promise not to take her to the ball game. Oh, thank you, honey. Darcy's a little feller. Probably handier than my old 45. I wonder if my aim's as good as it used to be. Did I ever tell you about the time the bandits held up John's bank? We live next door. And I shot one of them off of his horse from the kitchen window. Careful, it might go off. Oh, shucks. Not unless you... Not unless you pull the trigger. Ah, there's a good bullseye. I bet I can hit that. Don't, you might shoot someone. Oh, you spoke too soon. Hello, Millicent. Hello. Hello. Hello, Aunt Sarah. So nice of you to come. Won't you sit down? Can I get you a drink? No, thank you. Cigarette? Thanks, I'm in a hurry. But I wanted to stop by to ask you if you'd do me a favor. Of course. You'd better ask first what it is. I'll be glad to do anything. A club I belong to is giving a benefit. And the members are putting on a variety show. Oh, an amateur performance. We're a bit short of talent. I'm the only girl that seems to be related to a professional, so I... I thought maybe you'd help us out. It's very kind of you to ask me, but what could I do? Why, anything you like. I'll leave it up to you. Let's see, I have the musical numbers and a couple of vocals. Maybe you could do something different. When is the show? On the afternoon of the 17th at the club headquarters. And the house will be full of who's who. Hmm, quite an affair. Yes, the cream of society. I don't know just what I could do, but... I've been studying voice in Shakespeare. I promise I won't let you down. I'm sure you won't. Thank you so much for your help. I have to run along now, a meeting of the program committee. I'll call you about further arrangements. Come again soon, won't you? Thank you. Goodbye. 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 Now, what's that minx up to? Just imagine how I've misjudged her. Either she's afraid her show's gonna fall on his ear, or she's doing it to spite Lavinia. She was awfully nice.
This is my chance to show them. Hello, Professor Bliss. This is Miss Westland. Could you come over right away? I need some help. Oh, thank you. This is the opportunity I've longed for all my life. And what an audience, right out of the social register. I hope Millie's show is good. I missed a bridge game to be here. Be entertaining, I'm sure. Thank you all for your generous support of our benefit and we hope you'll enjoy it. The first number on our program will be a piano solo by Miss Eleanor Freeman. Show. I'd rather see you. I wish I knew what you were going to do. Now, don't let it bother you. This is tops, as high as you can go. Probably clear over their heads. Not this audience. Go on, Mac, let me finish dressing. Well, good luck. I never had stage fright before. You've no reason to be nervous. My knees are weak. My throat's dry. Three minutes, Mr. Westman. Oh, my headdress. Oh, it's your headdress. Good luck, honey. And now, ladies and gentlemen, I would like to present Miss Eve Westland in an original dramatic interpretation. more the juice of Egypt's grapes shall moist these lips. Yar, yar, good Iris. Quick, methinks I hear Anthony call. <laughs> I see him rouse himself to, to praise my noble act. I hear him mock the luck of Caesar. <laughs> the little fool. Which the gods give men to excuse their afterwrath. Husband. Husband. <laughs> Disgrace. You've got to get rid of her. This is no time to talk to her. Maybe she'll listen now. Buy her off if you have to. I'll talk to her tomorrow. Now. If you don't, I will. All right, but let me handle it. 
You were angry. No, don't you cry. I thought it was just grand. Look what I've done to Millicent when she was kind enough to ask me. I was terrible. Did you hear them laugh? Oh, buzzards. It was the orneriest trick I ever run across. Yes? It's me, Mac. Don't come in. I don't want to see anyone. But I am in. I'm sorry, Eve. I don't want your sympathy. Let me finish. I'm sorry it happened like this. I was so sure I could do it. I'd give my shirt if I could help, but... Please go away, Mac. I've got to think. I just made a fool of myself, and it's not so easy to take. All right. Whatever you say. Eve, I never knew until I heard them laugh. Never knew what? I never knew how much I've missed you lately. Well, how much you've meant to me. What I'm trying to say is I... Oh. You'll excuse us, please. Oh, sure. Well. I'm sorry. I know exactly what you came to say. Cleopatra, how dare you deliberately spoil Millicent's program? I suppose I did it for a laugh. Eve can hold her own. Don't you worry. Oh, I wish I could do something. We regret your reading was... Uh... I regret the disgrace we're facing. If your preposterous claim should be upheld by the court. You've got something on your mind. What is it? I want you to drop your claim. We're willing to pay you whatever is fair. How little you understand. I'm truly sorry for what happened. I'm glad. You have every right to feel as you do. It's my own fault. I was silly to think I could get away with it. I'm glad you're going to be sensible about this thing. Uh, we're willing to give you uh, $10,000. Uncle Horace! This is not my idea, my child. You want me to give up my claim to the Sardom name because you're afraid I'll disgrace it. Haven't you? Your performance was worthy of the daughter of a ham actor. Lavinia. Get out. Both of you, get out! Acting again. I would suggest you save that for your type of audience. I suppose your friends out there are different from any other audience. You wouldn't understand the distinction, my dear. Oh, no? I can have those high-class wolves eating out of my hand in five minutes. And I will. I'll show you. Now get out of here. You wouldn't dare. Get out! Ridiculous. And Sarah! You've made a fine mess of things. The little... Uh, uh, mustn't use naughty words. Hey, what's going on? Never mind, get out. What are you going to do? Dance. Dance like I've never danced before. Yippee! Are you crazy? You can't do that dance here. This is for charity. It's for revenge. Eve, please listen. Run along. I won't let you down. I'll make this my best performance. Just for you, Mac. Oh, you meant... I mean, I've just realized how much you mean to me. You've been talking me in and out of deals for years, Mac. It's a little late to expect me to fall for that personal okay, line. Okay, so I'm trying to sell you a bill of goods. I'm putting on an act. For what, Eve? Can't you see I'm trying to keep you out of a mess? On your way, on your way. All right, Aunt Sarah. Let's go. Tell the musicians I want to play Song of Persia. And tell the electrician I want a soft amber spot. Hello, Sergeant Tomlin. This is Mac. You've done me a lot of favors, Sergeant, but this is the biggest one. Eve Lorraine is going to do her dance here at the Mayfair Benefit Show. All I want you to do is to get a man here in time to prevent her from going on. She's going to make a fool out of herself. I'm not talking about an arrest. But this is not a publicity stunt. Honest. Not a chance, Mac. I'd lose my job if I interfered in an affair like that. Sorry. Everything's all set, honey. Take off my belt, Aunt Sarah.
to see her dance. I don't want to be around at the finish of this. I'll see you later. Wait a minute, Mac. You go to the apartment and wait for Eve. She's going to need you. I'll have to get her things together. That'll take me at least a half hour. That'll give you a chance alone with her before I get there. Thanks, Ed, sir. another moment. You're responsible for this act. You got the girl mad, and they seem to be enjoying it. Now, you get along home. I'm going to stick around to talk to Horace and Lavinia. What do you want? Just visiting. Well, ah, pretty glossy. Didn't I tell you to stay away from here? I haven't any business with you. I want to see Eve Lorraine. Anything you've got to say to her, you can say to me. And talk fast. I'm not in the habit of talking fast, and I'm not taking orders from you. I'll wait. I thought I made it clear that you'll have nothing coming until the business is settled. I think different. What's the matter? Afraid you'll discover your fraud? I'm not afraid of anything. I'm just moving in on my share. Looks like you've moved in on yours. Miss Lorraine, what's the matter? I'll get a doctor. Call the police. No need for a doctor. What happened? The police will probably ask you that. I came as soon as I heard. I knew you would. What in heaven's name happened? I arrived home and found all the lights on. I walked in and there was Gus Hoffman on the floor. Mac, 
What did you say? I gave Mac my key at the theater and told him to wait for you at the apartment. Mac? Do you think he... You don't know anything. Let me handle this. Thank heavens I called Horace. He's on his way here. Oh, no, stop him. Don't let him come near here. Well, what do you mean? You've got to have help. And that's No, wrong. no. That's all very fine, but they've got you snubbed to the post. You've got to think of yourself. Here's the man who questioned me. You probably asked him to leave. Hurry, Aunt Sarah, please. Stop Uncle Horace. Don't let him come here. Oh, I'll see you later. We're going to release you. I'm not under arrest anymore? No, you're free to go, Miss Wesson. We have a confession from a man named McGrath. Mac. He was picked up in a dazed condition. As soon as he recovered, he explained what happened. He claimed self-defense. Can we see him? Please. Not before the hearing. Come on, Eve. Let's get out of here. I never did like jails. Well, here he is. Good. I'm glad they didn't hold you. Thanks. The preliminary hearing didn't take long. The only fingerprints on the gun were those of Hoffman. I think the evidence Mr. Campbell uncovered about Hoffman's having done a term for forgery had a lot to do with it. Odd, isn't it? I went into the bail bondsman's past as a routine matter in connection with Miss Westland's claim. What I found helped clear Mr. McGrath. I felt sure that Hoffman had forged the evidence to prove his right to a share of the estate. But of course, she never had any such idea. The strange thing about it is, if he hadn't been so anxious and greedy, he might have had legitimate proof. That's what I want. I still think that Eve is my niece. There are just too many coincidences in this case. You're right. We could expect one or two similarities, but not identical experiences. I have an investigator making a thorough search. Follow it through. Mr. Sardom, you advanced Eve a sum of money which she naturally wants to repay. Here's part of it. Why, I don't want any of her money. I, I couldn't think of taking it. If you knew her as well as I did, you'd know that she'd be hurt if you didn't take it. All right. But I think we'll soon find that it's all in the family. <laughs> oh, excuse me. Hello? Uh, yes, she's here now. She's leaving right away. Oh, yes, all right. But tell him to make it snappy. I'll do my best to hold her. Aunt Sarah, aren't you ready yet? I'm all packed. Well, what's the hurry? It's nearly two hours till train time. I told you, I want to get away without seeing anyone. I suppose I'll have plenty of time to study out at the ranch. Oh, shucks. You think just because they discover that Gus Hoffman was a forger 20 years ago, you're not my grandniece. As soon as we get there, I'll write Mr. Campbell and withdraw my claim. What's come over you, Eve? You haven't done anything to be ashamed of. And how can you possibly run out on a nice young fellow like Mac? I said goodbye to him after the hearing in the courtroom. Well, he didn't think you meant it for keeps. I want to get myself straightened out. You're a sardom, all right. Stubborn as old J.P. Please, Aunt Sarah, will you get ready? Oh, all right, I'll be ready in a jiffy. Wonder who that is? I'll see. Hello, Hello Horace. Hi, Aunt Sarah. Hello, Hack. You sure made a good witness for me. Shucks, I was prepared to shoot our way out of my head, too. <laughs> Here's your gun. The DA sent it back. You better have it registered. Not where I'm going. I don't want your money, Eve. You don't owe me anything. But I... Oh, Mac told me how you felt. Mac. Take your hands out of your pockets. Now, look, honey, I'll get it back. Don't I always? But Mac... That was my sales talk in your dressing room. I was on a level. You mean about loving me? I always have, I guess, without knowing it. I always will. Yippee!